Many Americans, I think Turkey is just another Middle Eastern country that they lump into all of the other Middle Eastern countries and really have not taken the time to understand or appreciate uh, what, uh, what an incredible country it is. I feel very offended when sometimes I'm lumped together with people who put bombs around their bellies and blow up marketplaces. Additional funding for this program was provided by Turkish Airlines. We go beyond your expectations. This bridge spans the Bosporus Straits, but also two continents. Look this way to Asia, look this way to Europe. Turkey literally sits at a crossroads between two land masses. Its symbolic position is just as important. It is here where East and West, old and new, Christians and Muslims collide and coexist. With an eastern border touching Syria, Iran, and Iraq, Turkey is surrounded by nations many Americans see more often on the front page of the newspaper than in travel guides. But western Turkey shares a border with Greece and Bulgaria, making it a unique location that connects Europe and Asia. Spanning 10,000 years and 13 successive civilizations, Turkey has not only survived attacks and takeovers since those early Roman times, but the country has thrived and flourished, blending the various cultures into a vibrant society filled with both traditional sharshaf and miniskirts and t-shirts. And this is from a person who took four years of Latin in high school and just loved every minute of it. And I thought Rome was where it all happened, and here is where you know, so many cultures came together. I mean, the Romans had a strong presence here, of course, but then you've got, you know, aspects of Asia, Greece, um, and on and on and on. Yeah, it, it was really um, quite an eye-opener. In school, they teach us about the Ottoman Empire, and they kind of get us to think that Turkey is a desert and just camels, and that it isn't really inhabited by cities and buses and cars and technology, and it's obviously, it is. It is those deep-seated misconceptions about Turkey that the Istanbul Center is trying to change. Through various tolerance and dialogue chapters based around the southeastern United States, the group has invited a handful of guests annually for a first-hand look at Turkey's treasured sites. The whirlwind 10-day trip is called an intercultural tolerance and dialogue tour. Some people have stereotypes. Um, our mission, uh, Istanbul Culture's mission is um, remove those uh, stereotypes and, and encourage people to look at uh, common things between two different countries and two different cultures and to show our cultures and religions and everything in Turkey um, which one is true and which one is wrong. Nowhere is this fusion and confusion of culture more pronounced than in Turkey's religion and government. 99% of Turkish people are Muslims, and in this post-9-11 era, even the word Muslim or Islam strikes fear and sends up a red flag to many Americans. When I told my friends that I was coming to Turkey, almost everyone was concerned about my safety. Uh, they thought that I was going off to the Middle East, and there was no distinction between Turkey and any place else in the Middle East. And, and I myself had some concerns because I found out that our hotel was going to be in the Fatih district and I read in a guidebook that that was the center of radical Islam in Istanbul and I thought I wouldn't even be able to go out of the hotel in safety. 
Um, and I was concerned at one point that one of the cities was close to Syria, and it was, I thought that that was a matter of concern. At a time after especially 9-11, um, you know, many misperceptions came about, especially in the United States. And actually at the time, I remember when that incident, horrible incident happened, uh, of course, I mean, the American people had really um, traumatized, traumatized uh, by this event. Um, and, uh, you know, but Turkey, uh, from the very beginning, uh, supported U.S. Uh, fight against global uh, terror in Afghanistan and later, of course, uh, you know, uh, in uh, Iraq and uh, elsewhere. Uh, because, you know, Turkey is also one of the places where uh, most suffered from uh, terrorism, both, you know, uh, domestic terrorism and international terrorism. To some, the Istanbul Center's mission seems daunting. To the naysayers, it seems impossible. But for the center, the mission is quite simple and surprisingly effective. Bring two people together. Introduce them to your family, your school children, and your businesses. Sit down for coffee or a meal, and you have opened a pathway to dialogue and understanding. After the 9-11, um, there has been some um, reactions and some misunderstandings, maybe, or the need of uh, knowing about Islam, especially for the American people, then this Tolerance and Dialogue Group is trying to help people meet Muslim and Turkish people also and uh, make a connection between them and get to know themselves, get to know each other better. For this group from Florida, it is no hard sell, no public relations mission, no indoctrination of certain ideas. The Istanbul Center opens the doors of hospitality and each person decides or judges the country for themselves. I, I think the Turkish people are really not into um, major public relations, putting on the Ritz. Um, to me they appear to be, uh, it was said best, they have a saying that uh, time is the interpreter. And I really believe that they feel through time, interaction, dialogue, uh, you will begin to understand the culture better. So I think it's going to take some time for a lot of people, particularly Americans, to understand the Turkish color, the Tur Turkish culture, and Islam. Through the ages, the borders have shifted. Neighbors and even the country's name has changed from Byzantium to the Ottoman Empire to Turkey. The capital has been renamed and moved from Constantinople to Istanbul and now to Ankara in the heart of Turkey. Invaders have come and conquered and gone. Many will remember memorizing the famous line from Latin class, Vini Vidi Vici, I came, I saw, I conquered. Julius Caesar issued his celebrated proclamation in Turkey upon defeating the Pontus, a formidable kingdom in the Black Sea region. Welcome to Aspendos. It's the antique theater. It's near in Antalya. And uh, this theater is uh, from the 4th century BC. This wondrous history spanning the millennium from Greco-Roman times to the present only adds to the rich sights the country proudly shows off to tourists. I think my favorite sight so far was um, I'd have to say it was a, a tie, a two-way tie for first. Uh, first of all, it was Aspendo, the uh, theater. And I just really, rather than moving around, I just sat in place and just tried to experience what it might, must have been like. Who came here? How did they get here? How far away did they come? How long did it take them to get here? Um, and just tried to imagine what people were dressed like and what they were doing there and to realize that this was uh, almost 2,000 years ago. and. Uh, I just wanted to try to experience the experience. Uh, I just thought that was a really fascinating uh, outdoor theater. Two of the seven wonders of the ancient world lie in Turkey, the Temple of Artemis at Ephesus and the Mausoleum of Harlikarnassus in Bodrum. 
Istanbul is a treasure trove of ancient sites, including the Roman cisterns, the Blue Mosque, and Hagia Sophia. Hagia Sophia, I think, is one of the essential buildings in the world. To not know about Istanbul and to, to go there is to like not know about Rome. And it's, there's a feeling about it that's amazing and just kind of the depth of history because there's Byzantine history and Ottoman history, uh, just layers and layers of it. And it's utterly fascinating from an intellectual and cultural point of view. Every morning, the sun rises here in Asia and Europe at the same time, where the continents meet. For approximately 2,700 years, this city alone ruled the world by the Eastern Roman Empire, the Byzantine Empire and the Ottomans. We have settlement dating back 4,500 years. Napoleon said, if the world was one country, then Istanbul would be the capital city. And who can resist a peek inside the lavish Topkapi Palace with its harem once forbidden to outsiders' eyes? UNESCO, the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization, designated Cappadocia a World Heritage Site. Even Disney's creative geniuses would be impressed with Mother Nature's handiwork at Cappadocia. 30 million years ago, volcanoes erupted, spewing out ashes. Through the years, erosion carved fairy chimneys into the rock. Do you know the name of this stone? Because this stone is a tufa, it's a kind of volcanic ash. They might have stayed an incredible geological phenomenon, except for Turkey's unique location. Sitting on the ancient silk trade routes between east and west, Cappadocia's trade and resources were tempting prizes, so the region was frequently invaded, raided, and looted. To protect themselves, the locals took to living in caves and grottos, with entrances concealed from troublemaking outsiders. Christians fleeing persecution carved a honeycomb network of homes and chapels into the porous rock. Those early churches were really something to me, to, to realize that, that we are in a Muslim country and has been predominantly so, that they still revere and honor these early churches, these early Christian places as well, and are very proud of them, and that we saw quite a few Muslim uh, Turkish nationals enjoying that place as well. <laughs> Cappadocia was awesome because you could have a historical place and religious place and you could run around in the rocks and see the places instead of just looking at them like in museum style. Traditions in Turkey are a fusion of these ancient cultures. The Romans, the Greeks, and the Arabs have all left their distinct cultural handprint on Turkey's culture. Three examples immediately pop to mind when you think of Turkey. Turkish baths, Turkish coffees, and Turkish rugs are all examples of this blending of civilizations. Turkish baths contained elements of both Greek and Roman influence. The Greeks used public baths as health centers the Romans as social encounters. This was particularly important for women because this was one of their few outings. During the Ottoman Empire, baths were a place of quiet tranquility in a bustling society. There were different rooms for cleaning, for lying on hot stones, to relax, and even massages. Tea and coffee were served after the multi-step process was completed. Turkish coffee is relatively new on the historic timeline compared to the baths of centuries ago. It was introduced to the country by Syrian traders passing through around 1555. First I'm going to say in Turkish it's bir fincan kahvenin 40 yıl hatırı vardır. That means that will be my own translation. Uh, a cup of coffee makes 40 years of friendship. Now I would like to show you a Davori carpet. A carpet like this, for example. In East Anatolia or in Central Turkey, if you have daughter before she gets married, the family prepares her wedding gift. And 
most of them are carpets. In dowry carpets, the material they use the best workmanship and the best material, of course, because it's not commercial, it's not for tourist people. They made it for their own house, so they use the best material, best workmanship. An entire section of the Grand Bazaar is dedicated to Turkish rugs. Bazaar is actually a Persian word for market. The Grand Bazaar is the largest in the world and one of the oldest, first started in the 1300s. All made in Turkey, not China. It is a maze of 4,000 tiny shops tangled among 60 streets. Beware to the tourist who meanders without paying close attention to directions. Getting out of this dimly lit labyrinth of streets may be difficult. Everything, spices, teas, nuts, fruits, everything. The spice bazaar exists everything. As you wander through these rows of goods in the Grand Bazaar or here in the Spice Bazaar, you get a flavor for the country's food, its wares, its crafts, its culture. Everywhere you turn, you see the blue and white symbol of the evil eye, warding off ill fortune in a home. Modern Turkey's fortunes changed when its founding father and first president, Mustafa Kemal Ataturk, established in 1923 the Republic of Turkey. The parliamentary democracy is based on a secular, pluralistic system in which rights and obligations are protected by law. Though the country continues to dance a fine line between religion and a secular state, Islam and democracy have coexisted since the fall of the Ottoman Empire in the early 1920s. I think Turkey and the United States have enjoyed a strong partnership for more than five decades. Um, they both have a very strategic outlook to our immediate neighborhood and many other issues in, the, uh, in this globe. Um, the, uh, the strong military uh, security dimension of the relationship is now being uh, complemented by the uh, economic, cultural, uh, and also, um, if one could say, civilizational aspect of things. Uh, the United States rightly recognizes Turkey as a security producing country in this region, a very volatile region. Um, Turkey, uh, the United States recognizes, especially the last six years, uh, the government that we are, uh, that my party has formed, is, has a very uh, moderating influence over many societies in the Middle East and also in the larger Islamic world. So the United States understands that the success of, of our uh, endeavor and our uh, political experiences here has uh, more meaning than just the national borders of Turkey, but it, it, it resonates throughout uh, a, a very large geography that's very important to the United States. <laughs> Militarily, Turkey is a strong ally of the West and the only Muslim country a member of NATO, the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. But Turkey uh, is uh, an important member of NATO. It has a strong, a long tradition to work closely with the United States and other allies in, within NATO. We have been part of many operations ranging from Bosnia, Kosovo, Sudan, Afghanistan, Somalia, whatnot. And uh, we believe in the mission and, and, uh, and uh, the leadership that uh, many countries, including the United States, provide to NATO. Diplomacy, dialogue and exchanges can continue on many levels. Florida State University's International Center has opened up an exchange program here at Fatih University. Fatih University is located on the European side of Istanbul. It is a modern, sprawling campus with a diverse student body. Our university is an international university. The basic idea of the university is to establish a multicultural environment. Uh, in our university, we have students from 55 countries so that we achieved uh, partially an international environment. Florida State is currently the only Florida school offering an exchange program with a Muslim country. Florida State University President T.K. Weatherall is proud of this initiative. 
it's a changing world that we're living in. Uh, the Muslim religion, the Muslim culture is something that's uh, somewhat new, I guess, to, to many of us in America. Uh, our students are more involved. Uh, certainly that part of the world has a lot of uh, issues and to be able to be involved with that, have students involved, hopefully you can play some small role in resolving some of those conflicts with dialogue. Rhodes Scholar and former student body president Joe O'Shea sees this as another opportunity for students to travel and learn abroad. It's not something new that FSU is expanding its horizon in the international higher education uh, arena. Um, and uh, a new exchange program in Turkey is, that's just another added element that, uh, that a lot of U.S. universities don't embark into, uni into universities in the Muslim world or in Africa. And I think as FSU expands into the Muslim world and also into uh, Central and Eastern Africa, uh, we will be setting the bar high for the rest of American universities. <laughs> Turkey is a living classroom, not only in dazzling sights, but mystifying religious sects like the whirling dervish of Konya, who twirl for hours in an almost trance-like state, one palm facing upward towards the sky, the other down towards earth. To enjoy and to truly understand this culture, you also need to look beyond the sights and sounds of the city and discover its people and children. Anybody can go see ruins, but um, that, that school um, is, is unique uh, and it's something that you're not going to, no travel agent in the world is going to connect you with that. Uh, it's just a, a unique opportunity. The Istanbul Center trip offers a unique opportunity to visit homes, opening those doors of dialogue in a rare look for a foreigner into everyday family life. Everywhere the group traveled, families offered meals as sumptuous as anything an American would sit down to at a Thanksgiving feast. There was a never-ending array of dishes. This is salad. Its Turkish name is Jajik. It's börek. They were traditional dinners prepared by extended families and enjoyed by everyone, including the youngest members. In America, we're used to having a, a plate with a meat, vegetable, and starch, and. Um, here they do courses and it's a very long, uh, not long, but a drawn out dinner where you have community and you have friendship and it's not something you rush through. The guests don't get off lightly. There is always a barrage of questions about America, her foreign policies, schools, movies and TV shows. I wonder in America, what do you think of Turkey? Is Turkey lower or higher than in your expectations? From a historical perspective, I've learned that Turkey is the crossroads between Europe and Asia, and that many, many civilizations and nationalities have inhabited Turkey, um, making it a very um, accepting and tolerant culture. And so that has been eye-opening for me and educational for me, and I've, I've really enjoyed it. And to meet people like yourselves and take us into your home, uh, enjoy your food, uh, has been a bit overwhelming. And I thank you uh, very much, all of you, for being our hosts. Over tea and coffee, the conversation continues. The questions may be pointed, but the tone is never rude. Generosity is as never-ending as the dinner dishes, and no one leaves empty-handed. In Turkey, no encounter ends without the obligatory gift exchange between hosts and guests. For these Floridians, Turkey will no longer be a dot on a map, a place thousands of miles from America's coastline. It will be a smell in the ancient spice bazaar. We have traditional meatball, köfte spy, all in one. We have fish spy, kebab spy. The sound of the call to prayer. No. 
the sight of smiling children welcoming them everywhere. The fear of an unknown culture and country will be replaced forever with understanding, and if not acceptance, at least tolerance for the culture of others. Well, as an educator, I um, uh, feel responsible really for sending our students off with an appreciation of people from other cultures, appreciation with people from other faiths. I think it is of the utmost importance that the Americans have tolerance for, <laughs> for all kinds of people, all kinds of religions. There's so much to learn and there's so much good in everyone and I truly believe that tolerance is imperative. If that happens, the Tolerance and Dialogue group can boast mission accomplished. I remember someone said that one candle may, may not light up a whole hall, but if you have more than one candle from the whole world, it'll light up like the whole world. They are changing the world one trip, one person at a time. <laughs>